First of all, let me start by saying this movie is fantastic. I just told Knight this is one of his best films. Uh, you nice. both are so good in it. I'm sure you're hearing this from everyone, and I'm done. I'm out. <laughs> no, but I'm, so I'm going to read this because um, I have an individual question for you, and I want to make sure I say it right. Okay. Uh, do more people want to talk to you about Mindhunter, Frozen, Hamilton, or your one episode of And Just Like That? Icons, icon. It's funny. And Just Like That it, it gets a lot of play uh, with people, but... I would say Mindhunter is the most is the most asked about thing for sure. That is the right answer. Okay. Right. I didn't know there was a right or wrong. Yeah, there is. Because I could continue talking. Have you seen Mindhunter? I haven't. Okay, listen, sir. Wait, what? <laughs> <Did> you know <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I am go I'm going to at some point. Oh, I, I haven't, I haven't right. yet. I'm going to say okay, this. Okay, okay. It is... It is probably the best thing Netflix has ever made. Oh, wow. um, it's, it's really incredible. And um, you know this. It's incredible television. It's like, it, I, I can't emphasize enough how much it's worth your time. Okay, I have so been told sweet. that many, many times. I will. I'll watch Still it. Still refuse you watch, to watch it. If you watch BBC's Lark Rise to Candleford. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Which you've never heard of, exactly. <laughs> I, I keep saying I want to watch things you're you told me not no, to. No, you don't need to. But yeah, I will watch it. We'll see. Remind, in a year, please text in and be like, have you watched? Or in six months. In a year. Oh, in a year. Um, <laughs> so I do want to talk about uh, something actually serious. Um, you guys are obviously openly gay. You're playing a gay couple in a movie, this big, you know, a big Hollywood movie, which honestly, I don't think this, this thing could have happened 10, 15 years ago. I think that it's, uh, it's amazing that, um, and it's not like the focus of the story. It just happens to be. So can you sort of talk about that and how cool it is and how, you know, just, if you could talk a little bit about that. I came, I came out like 15 years ago. So I, and I remember when I came out, it was 2009, so whatever that math is, 14 years ago. Um, I remember thinking like, okay, I'm, I'm sort of putting aside any dreams of being in a big Hollywood movie because it didn't seem like that would be possible. Uh, gay marriage wasn't even legal yet. And so the fact that we're in an, and grew up watching Knight's movies, of course. So now we're in a Knight movie where a married gay couple is the central family of the story and sort of the love story of the movie. And, and in some ways with Chris and our daughter, the heart of the movie. Uh, and we're two out actors and it's like whiplash of how fast that happened. Mm -hmm. And I just feel, I know we both feel insanely, insanely lucky to be the age we are now, in the time we are now, riding this wave of progress. It's extraordinary. Is there anything you wanted to add? I mean, I think that's a very good answer and I heartily agree with all of it. But yeah, I, yeah, I, I feel very uh, grateful, very proud to be in this film. And I think the way it, it does handle the, the their relationship and um, the... The queer narrative that they have lived is a, it's done very sensitively and it's done very deftly by night it's uh, it honors i think uh, a narrative that a lot of queer people will be able to relate to without it becoming the crux of the film and at the same time i think their them being a loving family is universal and i think that the film really exemplifies that it's a really um it really demonstrates that kind of the thing that that our community speak of a lot is love is love and, and this film totally shows that i think what do you think it is about end of the world movies and television shows that we just love that genre and keep coming back to it? I think because we've, uh, well, right now I guess we've survived the pandemic. We've got the, uh, we've got the climate crisis being a very present uh, fear factor in our lives, and I think you know, night is purposefully playing on those fears. I think the, the fears that we have as a kind of our collective our collective fears as a, as a society. And um, I, 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 like I remember, I was obsessed with the apocalypse and, and Deep Impact and Armageddon did that for me. Sure. Yeah. And, I and like, I was so obsessed that I looked into the Nostradamus prophecies. I read the book of Revelation twice in the bath. Um, in, <laughs> and I thought I was gonna like kind of crack the code of what 666 was. Why who, in the bath? I don't know, I just read it in the bath. And what the, what the, who the four horsemen of the apocalypse were. And I feel like, I feel like for as long as our time has been documented, there have, we've always felt like it's around the corner. You know, our, our 
the ending of of this is our own of our own lives is, is our only certainty. So why wouldn't we think about it all ending? You know, and um, I think it I think that really does hook you into the the film. Couldn't say it better. <laughs> so one of the things. Um, there is some moments where there is uh, like 10 pages of dialogue that you guys are filming long where the camera is going around. I love the way he shoots this and some of the use of close-ups. But what was it like working with Knight? And what surprised you about working with him on set in the way he directs and the way he moves camera? First of all, I didn't know that it was going to be shot mostly in chronological order, which was really amazing uh, acting-wise to start. It's rarely you get that opportunity to start at the beginning basically and go to the end. <clears throat> he told us when we were, we had two weeks of rehearsal, which is also very rare in a movie and great. And we learned a lot about our characters and each other during that time. And he told us, you know, I have the entire movie boarded. I turn around and you will see in there were the cartoons of not only like, like the, the ideas of the shots, but the close-ups that you're talking about and the camera movements that you're talking about, all pre-planned. So when we would show up on set, we wouldn't do a rehearsal. That's what those first two weeks were for, reading and talking and discussing lines. When you finally show up on set and you start shooting, the cameras are in their position. He tells you where to stand, tells you where to sit, and tells you exactly what he wants. So the challenge is humanizing and, and um, connecting given the very specific uh, blocking and movements and words and this collective group of seven actors including Kristen the extraordinary eight-year-old who's her first movie and she's been given this sort of like precision acting exercise uh, we all really we all really believed in the movie and we all really believed in each other and we just went full out every time no matter if the camera was on you or not and it created this real like support and ensemble vibe to the movie. We all had each other's backs and Knight was, he would get really excited and really enthusiastic. And uh, there was a real sort of team energy on the set, which was exciting. Is it weird? Because the thing is, I would imagine with another director who doesn't have Knight's track record, it's hard to do something like that, to really believe in this limp, like this window that he's trying to shoot in. But when it's someone like Knight, is it sort of easier to give yourself over to a process that doesn't allow for a lot of improvisation? Yeah, I, I personally, that took me a while to get used to. I've been on a film before where it was really improvisational and it was really workshoppy it was super collaborative just like very different directors and they and i so enjoyed both processes but it took a, a while to what you're there to do as an actor with knight is you're there to to aid him realize his vision he's kind of like if 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 the set if the dialogue if all of the prop details are all these different palettes that he's painting with you are also as an actor another layer of that that he's kind of molding and shaping and he's this like ultimate puppet master in a way of, of what's going on and you're you the best thing to do is to yield to what he wants in a way and and that can take a little bit of it's this interesting thing of like still thinking but kind of slightly switching off and just trusting him and going okay he's made these incredible movies I, he knows what he's doing there is an element of a of leap of faith about it because you actually have the it's the least control I've ever had over anything I've performed. Um, but at the same time, the script was kind of like oh, just like overtaking me as well. So it was it was a really um, yeah, such an interesting process to be part of. I, I know a lot of actors and they can't watch themselves on screen. I don't know how the two of you are, but I am curious what it was like watching this for the first time because it is your you know what I mean. Like it's such an interesting uh, the choices M Night is going for. Anyway, I'm just curious what it was like uh, for both of you. It was cool. I, I was I was reminded of how intense we got. I, I was like, wow, we were all seven of us were really going for it. Um, and it, it felt uh, it took me back to that feeling of being in the cabin, which is a very specific experience as a group of actors to like, go to such a dark, intense place collectively as a group. Uh, and we did that every time between action and cut. And so watching it sort of sense memory sent me back there. I've, I've, there are moments when I 
I started to feel like I was going to cry uh, because I remembered so viscerally the feeling of being there and the overwhelming emotion that would, would happen. Um, and I thought, I just, I thought, wow, Knight really made something. I thought it was beautiful. I thought he did a really beautiful job. Yeah, same. My, I realized that my body was twitching whilst I was <laughs> watching it, which is actually what Knight's body does. If you watch it with the monitor, he's experiencing what the actors are experiencing. And, and But I was sat in the theater being like, oh, okay, yep, yeah, I'm doing all the things that I was doing in the when I was sat there strapped to the chair. But uh, I found it really thrilling. I, I think it's a kind of dream come true moment. He, he, he makes movies and like, I guess to quote Harry Styles, he makes movie movies. <laughs> um, and uh, I've never like seen my eyes in like a tight close up like that on a huge screen or anything. Like he just, he just fits this things to this, this thing together in, in, in a way that I've never like seen myself in such a kind of like big production. So I was like, wow, this is super cool. On that note, I will just say thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. It's so great to see you.